Well, good morning. Good morning. Hello, neighbor. I'm Robert Burns, and welcome once again to another edition of Sound Off Louisiana. Today, it is my distinct pleasure to have as our very special guest, State Representative Mike Johnson. Uh, Representative Johnson hails from Pineville, Louisiana, right in the center of the state. Uh, he graduated from high school from Pineville High, and then four years later, stayed close to home and graduated from Louisiana College, and then not long thereafter, got his law degree from Southern University right here in Baton Rouge. So, uh, Representative Johnson, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. All righty. And today, Representative Johnson is going to talk to us about a pledge that he originated. Uh, and I think the timing is incredibly um, applicable here. Uh, the pledge is that we'll try to have a very smooth and orderly uh, consensus formed on who will be the next Speaker of the House in the Louisiana uh, state representative in the legislative body. Um, and as everyone knows, that's not the case right now in Washington, uh, and particularly given events that take, took place over the weekend with regard to Israel and Hamas, uh, that's a very unfortunate situation that we actually have the speakership uh, vacant. So uh, with that, Representative Johnson, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your plan. I know you're getting quite a bit of traction. I've seen that. So why don't you go ahead and let everybody know exactly what your plan is and how things are going. Robert, let me just tell you on a positive note, I am, and I, you know, I'm, I'm 64. I don't know that I've ever been more excited about the opportunity that Louisiana has for real transformative change than we have right now, or will have in January. If, if things continue in the trend that it looks like it will, we will have a supermajority in the House, a supermajority in the Senate, and a, uh, a aggressive agenda from, from a new governor who will be a Republican. Uh, I don't know if Louisiana has ever had those pieces of the pie available. The only thing I'm concerned about is the direction that we're going to take in the House of Representatives, because we can have all of those pieces, but if we're not working in some unity on some key issues, we, we are destined to follow the same path Louisiana has followed all these years that have put us, you know, you know the saying, the top of the bad list and the bottom of the good list. So I'm, I'm excited about the prospects of serving for the next four years when we're going to do some real things, some hard things, and try to put our state on the right direction for the first time with conservative minded people in charge. And so I, I became concerned a few months ago, uh, not concerned, maybe that's not the right word. I, I became active in trying to secure what I hope will be a unifying effort that the Republicans will come together not air our dirty laundry in public like they're doing in Washington, D.C., but to get all like-minded Republicans together and agree that we will fight like cats and dogs behind closed doors, but we will come out of that room with one candidate for Speaker of the House, and we will, much like the way we get our preachers in Baptist churches, Four of the deacons might like them and two of the deacons might not. But when we get through praying in the back room and we come out to the church, we will be unanimous and support the new speaker and support the agenda of the governor and of the speaker and move our state forward without division and without uh, sniping back and forth. We may not agree on the issues that come up over the next four years, but to start the day, I would sure like for us to come together on who the speaker is. We've got 71, maybe 72, 71 of, of the uh, seats in the House are Republican, will be Republican. Wow. It only takes 53 to elect a speaker. I expect that speaker to be a speaker for the entire House, but we can elect him from the Republican delegation. And that's what the pledge asks, is that you agree, you promise, you pledge that you will work in the process with the delegation and that you will, as a candidate or as a representative, will 
participate in the election of the nomination, and that once that nomination is agreed upon by the delegation, you will come out and be, in, be supportive of that man or woman as our speaker. And we don't look back. And I mean, I, we're going to be drinking out of a fire hose right away. And so we don't need the division in the Republicans. And so that's what I'm looking for. And the response has been overwhelming. I've seen that. We've got, we've got 32 incumbents who are already elected. All but a handful have signed the pledge. We've got 15 races or 18 races with incumbents who are in races. And all but a couple of those races, all the candidates have signed the pledge. And then we've got 21 open seats. There'll be new freshman uh, representatives. And in almost every race, we have all the candidates or the expected winner in those races. So it's my hope and my belief that when we come together in December, we will have an overwhelming number of, of, of Republican representatives who will have taken the pledge and who will stay there all day and all night until we come out unified so that we can start the new year with a new governor and do our citizens right and for the first time in a long time, put our state on the right path to reverse some of the things we've done wrong and to do some of the things we've been afraid to do in the past. Well, and I think that's, uh, you, like I said, you've made tremendous progress in that regard. And I think it uh, speaks volumes that as you began this, you made it clear that you would not be right. a candidate for Speaker of the House, correct? That's right. I am not a candidate for Speaker of the House. And I felt like I had to do that so no one would question my motives. Sure. Uh, I'm paying for this can campaign out of my pocket, so it's wow. not like somebody's funding it. And uh, I just believe it's important and it's an opportunity. We don't need to let another opportunity get by. And this is our best opportunity to, to change the direction of our state. And I don't think there are too many people, except for maybe the current administration, that believes that we're on the right path. And, uh, and so we're excited about that prospect. And it, once we get past this little hurdle, uh, I think the sky's the limit on what Louisiana can do because we have all the potential in the world to make this the kind of state that our children can, can be educated in, our families can be safe, and, and our grandchildren can be raised right here in Louisiana instead of out of state, which has been the trend for too long. Well, sure, and I think your point, <laughs> excuse me, I think your point is very well taken. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with Representative Johnson, he is a, this is his first term. Uh, he is one of those ones who won't have to worry about waiting for election results uh, this coming Saturday because he had, drew no opposition. So congratulations on that. We'll be going Thank back you. in. Uh, but my point in saying that is when he first came in four years ago, he saw uh, firsthand. He got, a, got the firsthand uh, observation of what on our Louisiana scale Maybe the acrimony doesn't rise to the level it was in Washington, but it was it was it was pretty heated and and um, a lot of fractured tempers uh, in the selection of the Speaker of the House four years ago. So I want to commend you on doing everything you can to see that we don't have a repeat performance of that because it it left a sour taste in in a lot of folks' mind and and in all likelihood. Uh, probably inhibited progress that would have already been difficult given a Democratic governor, but made even more difficult um, with that. Now, you, you can elaborate, but... Uh, no, I, I agree with you, and uh, it, it, it isn't about the character of any of the people involved, but it created a, an environment for four years that was very divisive. There were those that, that took the action to walk across the hall and enlist with the Democrats, uh, good people. They just made a decision that I think was wrong for our state. And then it limited what our speaker who was elected that way could do because there was a portion of the house that just wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't let it go. And so he never fully got the full support of the, the body like he should have. And, and so I, I'm not wanting to go back and, and sure. blame anybody, but you do learn from history. Right. And I do know that there's an effort to repeat the same exact, uh, Oh boy. Scenario is last time. And when you think that you start out with 33 Democrats, 
it doesn't take a whole lot to get to 53, which is the magic number to elect a speaker. So that's why this is so important and why I'm so excited that so many people have signed on to give their word uh, that we're going to elect a Republican speaker from the Republican delegation. And I believe that if we show unity and strength in doing this together, that the rest of the House will join in and that maybe we could even elect a speaker with 100 percent of the body moving forward. And that would be my hope, uh, because, you know, we represent the whole state. Sure. This is an opportunity to make sure that our conservative agenda goes forward and goes forward without any internal strife. You can see what's going on in Washington, where where only eight Republicans, eight joined in with the Democrats. And now we don't have a Republican. We don't have anybody in the speaker. Bacon, yeah. And with what's going on in Israel, what's going on with the budget, it's uh, it's it's just not a good scenario. And it demonstrates what happens when you're not unified. And when you can't take care of your business like that outside of 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 where where everybody looks bad and and our country looks weak er and uh so that that's that's really my hope that we don't need dc politics in louisiana right and we've got a bunch of good people that are coming in a bunch of good folks that are returning and uh i'm just excited about doing this together moving forward for a better louisiana that i believe is out there there's nothing that we are lacking except for some conservative directions to try to do something about the crime, do something about our insurance rates, do something about our tax situation and our roads. You know, we're people in Texas, the people in Mississippi, the people in Arkansas aren't better people. They're just right. maybe they're governed in a better way. And I think we can do something about that this term. And that's why I'm kind of excited about the, the prospects that that these next four years can bring. Well, I would share that enthusiasm. Uh, I know it's, I'm, I'm more optimistic than I've been in, well, I've been around a long time. Not, I got, you got a few years on me, not too many, uh, but you're right. Uh, I don't think we've had this kind of an opportunity. Uh, and I commend you on wanting to do everything, <laughs> everything possible to, to make it smooth and without acrimony and, and I really want to thank you for agreeing to be our very special guest on Sound Off Louisiana. And if you have any other concluding remarks you'd like to make, well, you feel free. And we're going to publish uh, both the press release that you put out, uh, I don't know, maybe about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, give or take, as well as the traction you've been getting in various other media outlets like the Business Report, the Moon Graffon Show, uh, and so forth. Um, so... Uh, congratulations well, to you again. Uh, thank you, Robert. I appreciate you make, it. You make any concluding remarks you'd like to make? Well, thank you very much, Robert. I'm honored to be on your show. Appreciate what you do because getting the information out to people is is the most important thing. And uh, I do believe that we've got a great future ahead of us if we don't step on our own feet. <laughs> and the way to do that, one of the ways to do that is to elect the Speaker of the House who, if you understand that's the third most powerful, maybe the second most powerful person in the state, that we elect one in a unified manner. And uh, what you can do and what your listeners can do is to call your state representative or candidates in your state representative district, ask them, have they signed the pledge? Have they made the commitment to support the candidate that the body of Republicans vote on and choose in December. And if they haven't, simple thing to do. It's a simple pledge. You can sign it, send it to me. I will send them back uh, something that lets them show all the public that I am for moving our state forward in a unified Republican leadership and uh, very simple. So they can reach out to me. Uh, my email address is mjohnson, M-J-O-H-N-S-O-N at Legis. L-E-G-I-S dot L-A dot gov. And uh, I would love to hear from them and I would love to hear from their representatives. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Representative Johnson, for being our special guest today and wish you all the success in the world in, in accomplishing what you set out to accomplish not too thank long you. ago. Thank you thank so you. much.
call on us anytime. Appreciate you. All righty.